Welcome to another deep dive, everyone. Today, we're ditching the city noise for something a bit more, shall we say, serene. We're heading straight into the heart of Ireland County, awfully. Ah, awfully. Now, I know what you might be thinking, awfully. Is that even a real place? Mm -hmm. Trust me, awfully is not only real, but a total hidden gem. You got that right. It's often overlooked on those big Ireland tours, but honestly, yeah. that's what makes it so special. Right. No tourist traps here. Just pure, undiluted Irish charm. From what I've been reading, it's like stepping back in time, but with like really good gardens. And a telescope that redefined astronomy. Don't right. forget that. Okay. You got me that too. So ready to dive in. Absolutely. Let's uncover some of those hidden gems. Perfect. Our sources are painting this picture of Offaly as a mix of history, nature, and just a touch of magic. So I'm thinking we tackle this like a three-course meal. I'm listening. Course one, Offaly for history buffs. And what better place to start than a castle? Expert speaker, hit me with the history of Burr Castle. Is it everything it's cracked up to be? Burr Castle. It's not your average castle, that's for sure. Uh, We're talking generations of, like, real innovators living there, scientists, inventors, the whole shebang. The most famous being the third Earl of Rock. The Earl? What'd he do? Well, this guy was obsessed with the stars, like, seriously obsessed. I can respect that. I actually read about him in our research. Didn't he build some massive telescope? He did. It was called the Leviathan of Parsons Town. And yeah, it was gigantic. We're talking the 1840s. And he built the world's largest telescope right on his property. Let me guess. This wasn't just any old telescope. Oh, absolutely not. This thing was a behemoth, a 72-inch reflecting telescope. It was like looking into another dimension. For the time, it blew everything else out of the water. Talk about a room with a view. What were they even looking at with that thing back then? I mean, could they see the rings of Saturn? think even bigger. The Leviathan, it actually let them see the spiral shape of galaxies for the first time. Before that, galaxies were just thought of as like blurry blobs. Wow, so they were making some serious discoveries at Burcastle. Yeah. This Earl, he was basically like the Elon Musk of his time. Except, you know, with a telescope instead of a spaceship. Exactly. Okay, so we've got groundbreaking science happening at Burcastle, but something tells me it wasn't all about stargazing and scientific breakthroughs, right? I'm catching whispers of some pretty epic gardens in our research here. Oh, the gardens are definitely worth writing home about. Picture this. Over 120 hectares, sprawling with over 2,000 different kinds of trees, flowers, shrubs, you name it, they probably have it. 2,000? Seriously. Seriously. You'll find rare species like the Chilean lantern tree gets these vibrant orange blossoms, absolutely stunning. Or the handkerchief tree. Ever heard of that one? Can't say that I have. The bracts on this thing are incredible. Drooping, white, almost ghostly looking. Sounds like they've got a whole botanical United Nations happening over there. <laughs> what a way to relax after, you know, discovering a new galaxy or two. It's a nice change of pace from the cosmos to the Earth. Okay, so we've covered castles and cosmos, rare plants, tranquility gardens. This is just the first course of our awfully adventure, and I'm already hooked. But before we move on to the main course, I'm curious about something you mentioned earlier. You said something about, and this is where things get really interesting, former peat bogs transformed into landscapes of art. Yeah, let's switch gears a bit from history to something a little more, well, unexpected. Our next course, awfully for nature lovers with an artsy twist. Okay, I'm intrigued. You're talking about Lofbore Parklands, right? That's the one. Lofbore is a prime example of how awfully takes like the old and the new, and just blends them seamlessly. So walk me through it. We're starting with former peat bogs, which, to be honest, doesn't exactly scream must-see destination to this city boy. What am I missing here? Okay, imagine this. Vast open spaces. Once, they were all about peat production. Very industrial. Now, it's like this haven for wildlife, but here's the catch. They've got these amazing sculptures scattered throughout, like walking through a giant outdoor art gallery, except the backdrop is all lakes and wetlands and wildflowers. Sculptures and bogs. Okay, now you've really piqued my curiosity. Give me an example. What kind of art are we talking about here? One that comes to mind is called Sky Train. It's by an artist named Linda Brunskill. I think you'd really like it. What's it like? It's kind of evocative, you know? It's made from all these old industrial parts, remnants of the peat industry. There are these huge metal beams that look like whoa, a sky train reaching up, up, up. It makes you think about the history of the place, how it's changed. Wow, that's powerful stuff. It's like they took something that was purely practical, industrial, and turned it into art that makes you stop and reflect. Pretty amazing. Exactly. 
And that's just one of many. There's a whole trail of these sculptures, each one unique and thought-provoking. It's really something else. Okay, I'm adding Lofbora to my must-see list. Now, shifting gears again, our research also mentioned something called the Tullamore Show, which, full disclosure, I had never heard of before. Fill me in. What is an Irish agricultural show all about? Get ready for sensory overload. I'm talking sights, sounds, smells, you name it. Okay, paint me a picture. You've got prize-winning livestock, of course. Cows, sheep, pigs, all looking their finest. I can only imagine. Then there are sheepdog trials. Those border collies are unbelievable, so smart and agile. I've seen videos, they're incredible. And of course, no Irish festival would be complete without music. Live bands, traditional tunes, you'll be tapping your feet all day long. Plus, the food. Get ready for some serious foodie heaven. Freshly baked soda bread, hearty stews, all kinds of local delicacies. You had me at soda bread. I'm mm -hmm. sold. Okay, next up, we've got a total of 180 from Farm Life, but still in the spirit of celebration awfully after dark. Expert speaker, our sources mentioned something called Burr Vintage Week, and let me just say, the words vintage and festival together are like music to my ears. Oh, Burr Vintage Week is an experience. Imagine this. The whole tan transforms. Classic cars cruising down the streets, people dressed to the nines in their finest vintage attire, maybe a little swing dancing in the streets. Okay, stop right there. This sounds amazing. It's a celebration of bygone eras, you know, but with a distinctly Irish twist. They even have historical reenactments. They had me at vintage cars, but historical reenactments, now you're just showing off. It sounds like they've got all the bases covered. Fashion, music, history. Exactly. It's like stepping back in time, but in the best way possible. You've got to experience it to truly get it, you know? I can only imagine. But we can't forget those who like their history a little less, well, vintage. What about those wanting a deeper dive into Offaly's past? Ah, uh, then the Offaly Heritage Center is the place to be. It's a gold mine for history buffs. Give me the details. What kind of treasures are we talking about here? Okay, picture this. Artifacts, exhibits, archives all meticulously preserved and displayed, telling the story of Offaly from its ancient Celtic roots to, well, more modern times. You can trace the footsteps of the people who lived and worked there, see these incredible archeological finds. You'll leave with a whole new understanding of Offaly's rich past. Wow, we've covered so much ground today, from stargazing at a castle, to vintage festivals, to sculptures rising out of peat bogs. Who knew one county could be home to so much variety? And we've barely scratched the surface. That's the thing about Offaly. It's full of surprises waiting around every corner. It's like you said at the beginning, sometimes the less traveled path leads to the most rewarding destinations. It really does make you realize there's more to a place than what you see in the guidebooks, you know? A hundred percent. It's about slowing down, taking it all in. Speaking of taking it all in, as we wrap up our Offaly adventure, what was your biggest takeaway? I mean, we've covered everything from ancient monasteries to telescopes to vintage festivals. It's a lot to process. You know what surprised me the most? What's that? Awfully, it kind of flips the script on how we think of Ireland, you know? Oh, so? We always hear about the coast, the cliffs of Moher, the Aran Islands, and those are incredible, don't get me wrong. But awfully, it's like discovering the whole other side to the country. The quiet side. The side that takes its time. Exactly. It's a good reminder that sometimes the most memorable experiences come from those places that don't shout from the rooftops the places you really have to seek out. The hidden gems. Exactly. Well said. So, for our listeners who are now adding Offaly to their travel bucket lists, what's the one thing you hope they take away from our deep dive today? That's easy. I hope they remember to never stop exploring. There are hidden gems like Offaly all over the world just waiting to be discovered. You just got to get out there and find them. Couldn't have said it better myself. From stargazing at Burr Castle to wandering through the gardens and even exploring those thought-provoking sculptures, Offaly has certainly left its mark on us. It's a special place, that's for sure. It really is. So until our next deep dive, keep exploring, and remember, adventure awaits.